In this video, I'm going to share with you the seven best photo and image editing apps, software and web tools that you can find in 2020. Hi guys, I'm Nick. Welcome to my 950 challenge, 950 days to improve my life in every way, health, wealth, skills, knowledge, and mindset. This video is part of my resources series where I share with you guys the resources that I've discovered along this 950 day challenge. So you can just jump onto any project you're doing and just get going without having to spend endless hours researching. So like I said, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the seven best photo and image editing software apps, and web tools that you can find in 2020. I'm gonna do this countdown style. We're gonna go from seven to one. And this isn't in any like worst to best order, but they're all very, very good pieces of software. So we just kick off the list with number seven and that is GIMP. Okay, so GIMP does have a funny name, but it doesn't mean what you think it does. It actually stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. So this is as close as you can get to a Photoshop replacement but for free. This is an open source piece of software and it has all the bells and whistles that Photoshop does. GIMP has tools such as basic non-destructive cropping, clone stamping, various layers, filters, masks, you name it, GIMP has it and it's completely free. GIMP is not available on iOS or Android. This is a desktop only application, so you will have to download the software, but it is available for PC, Mac and Linux. At number six, we have Paint.net. Now, Paint.net did originally start out to be a free replacement to Microsoft Paint. However, over the years, it has developed into a more fully fleshed photo editing software and it still remains free. Sadly, Paint.net is not available on iOS or Android and it is only available on Windows 10. So given that it is only available on Windows 10, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about Paint.net, but just so you know, if you own a laptop with Windows 10 on it, this is an option for you. Anyway, we'll move on to number five, which is Adobe Photoshop Express. Now you could think of Adobe Photoshop Express as the younger brother of Adobe Photoshop, as it does retain the simplified version, the sort of essential bells and whistles that you'll need to edit your photos and make the adjustments and corrections that you'll need to post it on social media and to have your photos looking fantastic. The bonus here is that Adobe Photoshop Express is available on Mac and PC, but it is also available on iOS and Android. So if you like to edit on the go, this could be a good option for you. Adobe Photoshop Express offers you all sorts of tools to work with, with one touch transformations. It offers you exposure correction, contrast correction, light adjustments, color adjustments, and all sorts of healing tools, masking tools, and spot manipulation tools. So it's a pretty versatile piece of software, even though it's stripped down to fit into a mobile device. Moving on to number four, we have Canva. Now Canva is by far the most popular online web-based design solution around today, especially with the state of the world right now and everyone working from home. So many millions of people are jumping onto Canva because it isn't designed with a pro in mind, with someone with years and years of experience. This piece of software is designed for the everyday person to be able to create professional business quality designs, you know, without any experience at all. So. Canva is a fantastic option if you need to edit a photo, especially if you need to add text to a photo or if you need to manipulate that photo in some way to add other elements into the photo. Maybe if you're gonna create banners, adverts, or whatever it may be. It's fantastic for social media. As you can see here, you can do logo design, thumbnails, posters, you can do book covers, you can do Facebook posts, all sorts of things. So where the other pieces of software I've mentioned are just to manipulate the photo itself, this you can manipulate you know, the contrast, the exposure, and all sorts of things with the image, but you can also add additional elements to the image as well, such as you know your layouts and things like that. So Canva is a very good option if you want to do more with your photo as well. You can with the other ones, but you have to come up with the ideas. Canva has fantastic templates and image libraries that you can use as well. There is a pro version of Canva, which grants you access to a large array of assets that you can add into your photos, as well as a very large photo library. So if you're thinking of using the pro version, there is an affiliate link in the description below. So if you click on that and sign up, then I do receive an affiliate commission. So um, thank you very much. So moving on to number three, we have Photopea. So Photopea is essentially 
just a bare bones, stripped down, online only Photoshop clone. If you've used Photoshop before, then this layout will look very familiar to you. You've got all the tools here that you would use in Photoshop. You've got your healing tool, you've got your clone stamp, you've got your eyedroppers, your selection tools and everything. Also, like some of the other examples I've given, if you click on new project, you also have templates for your Facebook cover pages, for your YouTube cover pages, Twitter profiles, etc. So that's a nice little addition into this app. Additionally, we have the free templates here as well. So you can scroll down the free templates and click on any of those that you might like to try out and you can edit those as well. But essentially you just import your file like you would Photoshop, work through it and save it to your computer. So Photopeer is a very good option if you just need to edit something quickly and uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Moving on to number two, we have Pixlr. Now Pixlr actually have two editors that you can use. Here we have the Advanced Pixlr E or the Playful Pixlr X. So let's just take a look at those. So here we are, we have Pixlr X on the left and Pixlr E on the right. Now what we'll do is we'll just jump into one just to show you the difference. G'day mate, here we are. So as you can see on the left hand side here we have the tools. We have a limited amount of options here. We can draw, we can add some text, we can do some liquefying where you mold and move and bend the, uh, the image around, which is a pretty fun tool. And you've got your usual adjustments here with your color vibrant saturation temperature etc but these are all the tools you have there isn't much else you can do other than this with the pixlr x option so if we just close out of that and go back to the main screen we have pixlr e and what we'll do is we can see here we can cut copy paste fill and gradient tools sponge and color tool advanced color picker more tools more control there is just a lot more in pixlr e so you click on it it looks the same Click on G'day mate, but as you can see here, there are a lot more options than there were previously. So if we're just looking down the left hand side bar here, we have, you know, the healing tool and things like that, and the blur, sharp and smudge tool that weren't in the Pixlr X version. So Pixlr E is definitely worth checking out. They're both free, so it's, it's worth checking out both of them really. But yeah, so that's Pixlr and one bonus here is that Pixlr is available on iOS and Android as well. So if you want to edit on the go, check out Pixlr uh, on your phone. Last but not least, we have Photor. Now Photor comes with three different options. We have edit the photo. So if we just click on that, you can see that we'll select Smiley Nick. We can see that we do have some options here to you know, crop. We can adjust the color, temperature, fine tune the image and things like that. But a lot of these options are locked. So if you want to upgrade to the paid version, that will unlock these other options here. However, if we go back to the main page, you can see you can actually make a collage. So making a collage looks like it's based around Instagram. So if you want to make fun Instagram posts, then uh, this looks like where you would do that. And if you want to create a design, much like Canva, then you have that option here where you can you know, do your marketing, do posters, business cards, logos, email headers, and much, much more. So Photo does have some very good options for you to be able to create all sorts of different designs, whether you're just adjusting your photos or you actually want to create a design for social media. So there you go, guys. That's the list. That's the seven best photo editors that you can find for free online today in 2020. If you like the list, then please give me a thumbs up. If you like this video and you want to see more, then uh, hit the subscribe button as I will be posting every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. And also check out my other videos. There is another video on where you can find the best images, the best free photos online, so you can actually use them to edit in these programs. And if you want links to all these apps, then check out my website, www. 950challenge.com forward slash resources where there are links to each one of these web tools apps pieces of software and there are also links to many others that might be able to help you out with your latest project your business or whatever it might be so yeah thanks very much for watching guys i hope you got some value out of this and i will see you in the next video cheers